Hello everyone and welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Where we, we put some dents in this testimony, but we still haven't found Haven't made our killing blow yet. Right, let's press this Nothing could be more serious than an envelope disappearing from the studio and you were hiding that fact from us mm, Yes, well actually I Don't argue the possibility that a letter disappears from that studio but their foreheads, isn't there a much more serious question before us? Right, how Mr. My Shame was poisoned, I know. But Mr. Brussels' testimony has changed, which means the facts of this case have two. And what he's told us means something entirely different now, I'm starting to think. Let's keep thinking, Apollo. Uh... Who poisoned him was his daughter. Uh, press that, I think we pressed that already. You say clearly as though we're obvious. This claim that the defendant poisoned the victim is merely conjecture. Uh, yes, well, you see, alright, yeah, we did this already. Yep, making it, I do things to make stuff up. <laughs> Understood, loud and clear. I need to keep my eye on what matters. How and why was Drew Mysham killed? I need to find what didn't prove it. it was the defendant? Okay. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She's admitted as much herself. Yep. Oh, didn't this? All right. I want to press this. Cause didn't this get us a thing? You're sure about that? Well, to be really, really precise, I was busy, busy gobbling mint candies the whole time. One of those candies might have been poisoned. Yep. All right, we did this. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip through all this. No mint was found. Oh wait, I wonder. Unless it's different this time. Well, Mr. Justice, uh, if you have some proof, the possibility is there. I can feel it. Just maybe not prove it. Not yet. The possibility isn't gonna cut it. Not now. Oh, Mr. Mysham ingested that poison via a route other than that than that coffee. I feel like it's telling us no. Right? <sighs> like, I know, I know what it is, but I don't know if I can prove it. Gotta be this. Frame measuring two inches by two inches bears traces of deadly po Yeah. Looks like you have to take this back part off to put a photo inside. You have to be a really small photo to fit in here. True, and that pale blue is stained. Why would there be poison in a place like this? Well, there's one obvious reason. Whoever put poison in the coffee wrote the bit on here. Or is that right? Trucy might be onto something, actually. So that's the picture frame normal. Tiny frame, but what was inside it? So poison was on it. Poison was there. All right. I th I'm going to try. Proof is possible. Here goes nothing. You do understand what we need, yeah? Proof, air forehead, not possibilities. Of course. And, Prosecutor Gavin, I hope you understand. I'm ready to give you that proof. What, what did you say? I have proof of the disappearing envelope. I saw him writing a letter, I did. Ooh, it was picked up by the mailman, I assume? Of course. Which means... That envelope had a stamp... I don't think this helps us, Apollo. I think... Oh, boy. Uh, stamp. Ah! 
As we all know, stamps come dry with dried glue on the back. In order to use the glue, you have to wet it by licking the stamp. Objection. That makes sense. That's why it would be, yep, yeah. That's why it's on the coffee mug, but not in the coffee. If <laughs> no one worth talking to actually lick stamps in this day and age. What? Objection. Even if you wanted to talk to him, you couldn't. He's dead after all. <laughs> Got him. Okay, so he licked the stamp. But wait, how does that explain the atroquinin on the rim of the coffee mug? Because he went to drink the coffee and it was already on his lips. If he licked the back of a poison stamp, the poison would get on his tongue, yes? What would then happen if he put the coffee mug to his mouth, hmm? Got him. Those traces on the mug weren't the killer's doing. It was the other way around. Ooh, what? Coffee mug didn't poison Mr. Mysham. Mr. Mysham poisoned the coffee mug himself. Uh, order, order, order. Uh, that doesn't, uh, does it? Recall, if you would. Atroquinin is a slow acting poison, yes? The poison entered his body when he put the stamp on that envelope, but his time wasn't up until the very moment he touched his lips to that cup of joe. Please someone say something. <laughs> and Brushel agrees with us. Hey, you have something to add, Mr. Brushel. Oh, uh-oh. His nose is picking up another scent. As I believe I mentioned earlier. He put his letter in that envelope. Mr. Mysham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. A stamp, so-called postage stamp. Yep. But you know, I don't seem to remember him ever finding one. Uh, maybe he'd just run out. Incidentally, we searched the desk drawer at the scene of the crime. There were no stamps, not a single one. Crap. Mmm, that does pose a problem. How will you prove that the stamp was coated with poison? Actually, I'm glad no other stamps were found. It makes proving the stamp he used was poisoned possible. <laughs> right. Good show, good show. You can't even prove there was a stamp at the scene in the first place. Ooh, well, let's hear what the defense has to say anyway. Where is your evidence that proves the existence of this poison stamp? It's... This. Look at the size and shape of that. Ooh, well, it certainly is a cute little frame, and uh, by little, I mean uh, really little. It's on the victim's desk, Your Honor. Quite empty, as you can see for yourself. I noticed that too during my inspection, so what? Ah, apparently you weren't obser as observant as you should have been. You see, when you saw this frame, it was missing something quite important. Missing something? Yes, a pale bluish stain on the inside of the frame. Ashroquinin residue. What? Why wasn't I told about this? The frame is only two inches square. The face of the frame is even smaller. Maybe an inch wide at most? You aren't saying. Oh, but I am. Tell me, what fits in such a small frame? A commemorative stamp, perhaps? Got him. Order, order, order. The poison stamp was in this frame? Impossible. Uh, Prosecutor Gavin? Why would he put something like that on his desk? Don't tell me he had it there so he could commit suicide if the mood struck. You know what? Can I say something? I had a thought, see? Ooh, what, Mr. Brushel, and please stop jittering around like that. The victim was a forger, right? There's a lot of money in that line of work. Forger forges friends, makes enemies too, end quote. So the poison stamp might have been a murder weapon aimed at him. All right, you're gonna, if you're gonna do that every five minutes, you're gonna have to learn a new riff. Oh, Rich, that's a Rich. Leave the ridiculous flights of fancy to the Gavener's song lyrics, please. At least something we agree on. <laughs> this stamp was a murder weapon. Nonsense. Murder is a simple business. Who would go to such lengths? No one. Well, they would. Because that way you're not in the room. Oh, I disagree. You come again. Recall, if you would, the victim's reclusive lifestyle. 
Jirimaishem hid from the world. He avoided meetings. His only contact with the outside world was the mail. Uh, the mail? Now, if you wanted to kill someone you couldn't meet, but you knew red letters, a stamp would be the perfect weapon. You're ridiculous. Where's your proof? I want the proof. Show us evidence that the poison stamp was sent to him as a murder weapon. Might not have evidence, per se, but things are finally starting to come together. But what is it, Apollo? Your fists are trembling. I think I know what happened. I don't believe it, but I can see it. I think I know how Mr. Maisham was killed. Ooh, well, fill us in, Mr. Justice. A certain piece of evidence points to the truth, Your Honor. I can show you how someone with the intent to kill sent Mr. Maisham the stamp of death. It's the red envelope. Wait, can I check the... Oh, I want to take a look at the envelope, though. Sign the papers and send in the enclosed envelope. With the, with the enclosed stamp. Yes. Oh. How did I not pick up on that before? Take that. Isn't this the envelope? Uh, the one from seven years ago? Oh, right. Think about the text of the letter again. There were two pages in the envelope. This is page one. And this is page two. Seven years. I want to draw your attention to one phrase in particular. Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. Enclosed stamp, your honor. Ah! In other words, if I have this straight, the stamp poison on the stamp lick lick gasp, end quote. Now, what if he had done exactly as the letter asked? He had signed the document, put it in the envelope, and put the stamp on it, right? Then he would put it in his letter box. Fifteen minutes wouldn't have elapsed between affixing the stamp and mailing the letter, but the clock started ticking, and when the time came, he drew his last breath. And the murder weapon would be taken away from the scene. Uh, quite conveniently, thanks to the postal system. What? What? Don't even start. Such a splendid imagination you have, Air Forehead. Let me confirm one thing with you, if I might. So this poison stamp was on the inside, was inside this envelope from seven years ago. Yeah, is that what you'd have us believe, really? Well, it's a little bit of a stretch, but there's a possibility. Yes, a very small possibility. How small, I wonder. Um, a poison stamp in this envelope, a stamp that then became a mur the murder weapon. How do you intend to prove this seeming coincidence? But, well, ugh, it was seven years ago, and we don't even know who sent that letter. How long would the poisons even still be on at that point? And your answer is silence. I see. Very well. I moved to. Uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, it's not nice to pick on the Fraulein Clavier. Ah, Emma. What? <laughs> well, like my Christoph Gavin impression? Did I sound like him? Don't quit your day job. Don't you have a crime scene to be looking after, Fraulein Detective? Someone had to come dig you out of all the mess you're making of this case. Mess? You know, none of this would have happened if you just trusted in science a little more. You can find out if that stamp was in the envelope, easy. You care to explain yourself, Fraulein Detective? Let me ask all you want, but science is on my side. It's all in the residue, right? That's right, the poison detection spray. Uh, produce the red envelope at once. You can open it on the authority of the court. Oh, um... Uh-oh. Oh, wait, wait, ah. I 
was just I was just poking around randomly. I almost missed it. Got it. Oh, well, would you look at that? No mistaking it. That's at your Quinnin residue. I, I don't believe it. A murder weapon from the past? Now, seven years later, it bears its fangs at last. Absolutely outrageous. Tell me why. Why didn't this murder take place seven years ago? Well, um... There's one possibility. Maybe Mr. Mysham figured it out. Uh, figured what out? He realized that the person who sent that letter wanted him dead. So he sent his reply with a different stamp. And put his decisive evidence in a frame? Nick, you're still here. Nick, can I make a statement here on the record? I, Spark, Razor Tooth Brushel, claim this scoop is mine. Drew Mysham killed in cold blood by sender of seven-year-old letter, end quote. Mm, no, maybe something more succinct. Star falls after seven-year delay, end quote. Please leave. Order, order, order. I see no room for further argument here. I admit this is all coming as quite a shock. To think the murder weapon reached his mouth after seven years. Stamp his ticket straight to afterlife, end quote. Please don't. I think the witness is a bad influence on our judge. Yeah. I see no need for further debate on this matter. The sender of that letter seven years ago could hardly have been our defendant. Uh, Apollo, I think we just won. Very well, this court finds the defendant. That's not how this works. But, but I was about to win. Is this the bright future of our legal system? Uh, prosecutor Gavin? It to get to the afterlife from seven years ago. Tickets for Gavin or shows are invalid after two weeks. But it doesn't make sense any other way. It boggles my mind that so many people haven't noticed this. There is a fatal contradiction in our forehead's claim. Yeah. A, a contradiction? A poison stamp was placed in this envelope seven years ago. Whereupon it was framed, until now. If that's the case, then why would Drew Meisham have done what he did? Emma explained that. He must have realized it was poison. Darren lies the rub. Seven years ago, the forger drew my shem since the trap and put the stamp in the frame. I do not debate this, but this begs the question, why seven years later did he use that stamp on the night of the murder? Uh, surely you don't mean to suggest that Mr. My shem simply forgot? He put the murder weapon on the frame of his desk for seven years and forgot? It's not wrong. You expect us to believe he sprang the trap on himself? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I knew it wasn't gonna be that easy. Come on, it's the, it's. I believe the last case. Well, I admit this is all quite shocking myself. It does seem highly unlikely that he would fall foul of a trap that had been sitting on his desk for seven years. Uh, Apollo, I don't think we're winning anymore. <laughs> I am glad to see we're all back in the real world now. Welcome back to reality. We have been waiting for you. Objection! Okay, then how do you explain the poison stamp that was in this envelope? The poison stamp? Where exactly is this poison stamp again? Have you brought it to court for us? Ugh. I see no proof that such a thing ever existed. Objection! We proved it existed. What about the atroquinin residue, huh? Oh, I agree. That does seem to be an atroquinin residue. But their forehead. It's certainly no stamp. Yeah, but... Even if your precious poison stamp did exist, Drew Meisham never would have used it. That is all. Ugh. Wait! Mm, I believe we've come to a conclusion. Again? I got it. He wasn't the one... Hold his Vera. 19. Oh, so she would have been 12. Oh. She have known? Because think about it. If 
she was the one who figured it out and just like put that stamp off to the side. He didn't know. He didn't know what that stamp was. Uh, Apollo, were we wrong the whole time? I, I can't believe it. The poison traces match up. It can't be coincidence. I'd like to bring some closure to this issue sometime this year. Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor. Let's review the facts and see where we stand. Seven years ago, Drew Meisham received a red envelope. There are traces of poison natural quinine on the document inside that envelope. A similar trace was also found at the crime scene. On this tiny picture frame. The defense has indicated the possibility of a yellow envelope. An envelope that left the scene of the crime with a poison stamp on it. Yes, but even if the envelope contained a poison stamp, and Drew Meisham, knowing this, put it in a frame, he never would have used that stamp. I'm afraid you're right, which means there's a fatal flaw in the defense's case. I haven't been on the wrong track this whole time, I'm sure of it. The traces of extra quinine, the envelope, the frame, and Drew Meisham's mysterious death. They're all connected somehow. Ooh, well, Mr. Justice, do you have a conclusion for us? The defense stands by its case, Your Honor. We've seen that the logical outcome of the evidence makes no sense, which means that one of our clues must be a fake. Ah, fake clue. Fascinating. And if we find this fake, your wild fantasies will prove quite reasonable, yeah? The fake clue that's thrown us off the poison's trail is none other than... Not the red envelope. The red envelope is solid. Let's take a look. Painter known for his illustrations, poisoned at Drew Studios. Ah. gotta be him but why like it really comes down to process of elimination I feel solid about the rest of that evidence is it him in that he wasn't the one who figured out that, that was poison I'm, I'm hoping that's where they're going with this the victim was a fake clue? I'm afraid I don't understand. I'll explain. We have an envelope, a frame, and a mug linked by poison. That all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the victim himself. <laughs> Congratulations, you've completely lost to me. The fake evidence is none other than the master of fakes. Fake himself, the forger. It makes a good story, I'll give you that. The fake clue. Fakes. Forgeries. Ah! I know that face. That's the I just had an idea face. I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going with it anyway. What if our forger is the f fake? You come again. Seven years ago, our forger sniffed a trap and stepped aside. Seven years passed. Now the forger stumbles into that very same trap and dies? Why? Uh, that's what I want to know. Because the forger who was killed was a fake. Here we are again. The victim was a fake. One forger smelled the trap. One forger fell to the trap. But they weren't the same forger. <gasps> That's two forgers, and one of them was a fake. Okay, I was half right. I, I was half right. Order, order, order. So you're telling us that through mission, the victim was a fake? Well, if he was the fake, who was the real forger? You'd better not be claiming it was some kind of switcheroo. Uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to back up your story. Mr. Justice, show us just who the real Drew Mysham was. If Drew Mysham wasn't the real forger, there's only one, per one other person it could have been. Understood, Your Honor. Forger Drew Mysham was himself a forgery. The real forger was Vera. There can be only one explanation, really. The real identity of the forger known as Drew Mysham is none other than his only daughter, daughter Vera Mysham.
Order, order, order. Mr. Justice this is going out of the limb, even for you. I kind of agree. I mean, Vera, a forager? Let's consider it before you write it off entirely. If you look at the paintings in the studio, one fact becomes quite clear. Forgery had been taking place in that studio for quite some time. The forger wasn't caught in that trap set seven years ago. This can only mean that the one who was caught in the trap wasn't the forger. <laughs> well, uh, actually, that does make a certain kind of sense. One more thing. Only two sets of fingerprints were found in the forger's studio. Drew my shams and Vera my shams. If we know that Drew my sham wasn't the forger, that leaves only one possibility by process of elimination. The forger was Vera my sham. Well, I don't like that. I don't like when he's confident. I want to be the confident one. You fascinating. Vera my sham. You've been paying attention to the trial so far. Let's just ask her and be done with it, shall we? Who are you? Who is the forger Drew my sham? Was that an expression of emotion I saw on her face? <laughs> She's staring holes into Prosecutor Gavin's face. I'm used to being stared at by Fraulein's, believe me. Though they usually talk to me too. Tell us, where were you the one who forged those works of art? Yes. Uh, so the, the forger drew my shim was you. <laughs> yes, it was me. Who? What? What? The court was in an uproar and it wasn't coming down. We had to break for a 10 minute recess. Oh, do I get to save? To be continued. That's what we're going to call an episode. Holy crap. Uh, I didn't expect that. I, I did at one point. I thought that like, I thought Vera was like basically running the family business, which I, I mean, I guess she technically was. Um, and just happened to see that letter and was like, oh, here, dad, like, here's a, a weird stamp in a picture frame for you. Please don't ever touch it. That's where I thought they were going. That she's the forger. Hmm. All right, then. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.